Galwr aelodau i drefn a go dan reol sefydlog 12.58 bydd ar weinydd y tŷ Julie James yn ateb y cwestiynau ran y prif weinidog heddi. Cwestiwn cyntaf, Mark Reckless. Uh, will the First Minister, or should I say Leader of the House, uh, confirm at what cost the Welsh Government will look at alternatives to the current proposed plans for the M4 relief road? A public inquiry has been taking place over the last 12 months to scrutinise all aspects of the project, including costs and suggested alternatives. The Independent Inspector's Report and the Business Case will inform a final decision this year on whether to proceed with the scheme. But the First Minister told us in 2015 that the project would cost, and I quote, nowhere near one billion. I suppose in, that, in one sense that, that's correct, because the cost is now put at around 1.4 billion. If the Assembly does support the Black Route in the vote that we're now going to uh, have, how can we trust the Welsh Government to deliver it at acceptable cost when you've shown no ability so far to do so and the costs on the heads of the Valley Road are out of control? Are you asking the Assembly to write, write you a blank cheque? Um, no, not at all. I'm not going to comment on the merits of the project uh, due to the fact that a statutory final decision remains to be made. And it's quite clear that there are a wide range of views on this significant potential infrastructure investment. And it's extremely right that these views are all being heard at the inquiry and should be taken into account. The Cabinet Secretary of Economy and Transport has clearly stated in this chamber that he instructed the inquiry be comprehensive and test the need for the scheme in the light of the latest proposals for the South Wales Metro and consider alternatives and indeed consider the costs involved in that. Once the outcome of the inquiry is known, that will inform a final decision on whether to proceed with construction, and that will include, obviously, a business plan, which will then be put into place. Jane Bryant. Dear Llywydd, I was 13 years old when an M4 relief road around Newport was first mooted in 1991. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't aged. <laughs> <laughs> the, the current local public inquiry is the longest and most thorough inquiry in Welsh history, testing seven potential routes, including the option of doing nothing. The independent public inquiry is eagerly anticipated by my constituents, and it's only right and proper to look closely at the findings when they're published later this year. As for many businesses, visitors, commuters and constituents, the option of doing nothing or more delays to a decision are costly. It's estimated that the M4 is a key archery for 70% of Wales's population and economy. Will the Leader of the House relay to the Cabinet Secretary and the First Minister the imperative of a speedy resolution once the independent inspector reports, particularly with the removal of the seven tolls, which will increase traffic and congestion on that part of the road? Yes, I think the member makes a fair point. Sadly, I was a little older than 13 uh, yeah. at the start of this. Um, not much older, obviously. Um, but, I mean, there are a large number of legal, implication in, in, legal, legal implications involved in the consideration of the um, public inquiry. And we will need to consider options once we've got the outcome of the inquiry. And we'll also, that will have to include also the timing of the decision, the costing and the business plan, as I say. But absolutely, we're all aware of the serious issues on the M4 uh, around Newport. And the Cabinet Secretary is here listening to your remarks, which I'm sure he heard. Simon Thomas. Uh, thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. I'm sure you're not going to go ahead of the public inquiry, as you made very clearly, but uh, I'm sure you'd agree as well that we uh, in this Parliament have not outsourced £2 billion worth of public spending or the opportunity cost of alternative investment in alternative road transport and alternative transport methods to a public inquiry. We are the elected Assembly, and ultimately we should take that decision. I welcome the letter today from the Cabinet Secretary saying there will be a, a real vote in the Assembly. And to make that an even more vital and real vote, uh, will you, both as now deputising for the First Minister and as Leader of the House and your Chief Whip, make it a free vote for your group? Yeah, well, we, 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 I can, I'm very delighted, actually, to confirm that we'll bring forward a debate in Government time on the M4 corridor around the Newport project, following the conclusion of the public local inquiry. Given the legal implications, we are currently considering options as to the timing and format of that, and I will be keeping the Assembly informed of those plans as myself, other than as deputising for the First Minister. The Cabinet Secretary of Economy and Transport has just written to all party groups in the Assembly, um, but he will be arranging a technical briefing with project team officials on the current position to ensure members are fully appraised of all the facts related to the scheme beforehand. So um, I hear what the member says and take the, the point he makes, but we will be considering that once we know the outcome of the inquiry. Question die, Jenny Rathbone. 
What key message has the First Minister, and uh, through the Leader of the House, um, taken from the recent Stay Well in Wales survey? The survey provides a wealth of information to support work to improve population health. Its findings demonstrate that there is public support for many of the priorities set out in Prosperity for All, including our focus on early years. Uh, thank you very much for that. I mean, it's very clear from, from the survey that um, people expect uh, action on public health issues um, to ensure that uh, we improve the health of the nation. Um, on, on top of that, today we learned that there's been a doubling of diabetes um, in the last uh, 20 years. And um, we also heard from Cancer Research UK demanding that junk food uh, advertising to young people should be banned because of the um, rise and rise of cancers related to the um, poor diets that many people are consuming. So uh, could you tell us what appetite the government now has to take action to ban junk food and generally to ensure that young people are aware of what they are, they are what they eat and uh, they will only live a long life if they eat well. Yes, well, we have a very strong rac uh, track record in Wales of taking strong public health action where there is evidence that it will improve or protect population health. The Public Health Act, the a Active Travel Act and the current minimum unit pricing bill are very good cases in point. We'll be continuing to prioritise such interventions where there is merit and where taking action is within the powers at our disposal. But for example, um, in areas such as broadcasting, we don't have all of the powers we need, but we will be looking at, at ways of maximising our powers and our influence in those areas um, where it isn't in our direct control. And we want a strategy to create a very clear vision for Wales, and this will mean working with the UK government to ensure that we can drive forward changes required to, ha to tackle, for example, obesity, uh, growing obesity levels in children. Angela Burns. <clears throat> the uh, Stay Well survey actually, I thought, showed a uh, population that was very keen to take part of res in responsible health care and understood that prevention is better than cure and showed an enormous maturity on behalf of the, um, the public, something we tend to talk down sometimes, I think, here. And <clears throat> one of the things that they really picked up was that 76% of the respondents wanted to see uh, health services being offered more by employers, and employers taking more ownership of helping their employees to stay well. And we raised this last week in our debate, or the week before, in our debate on mental health and about the cost of mental health illness to the economy and what we need to do as individuals and as employers to help people with mental health to do well in their workplaces. Can you please, Leader of the House, perhaps outline what the Welsh Government can do to influence both public sector and, more importantly, the private sector to ensuring that they stand by their employees and really help them through times of trouble? Yes, I think uh, Andrew Burns makes a very good point. And the survey was very interesting, wasn't it, in terms of yeah, the appetite yeah. of people to um, uh, be regulated almost in, in terms of public health. The Welsh Government spends about £88 million of core funding uh, on Public Health Wales, and we have a range of measures aimed at preventing ill health, alongside a number of other public health functions. We also have the Healthy Working Wales programme, which supports employers across Wales to improve health and wellbeing at work, and has already supported around 3,500 employers in Wales, which represents about 36% of the working population of Wales. I can also say that um, in looking at fair work and the fair work agenda in Wales in social partnership, one of the things we have been looking at is ways of assisting employers to, have, uh, to help with uh, public health promotion. Um, because, of course, one of the big issues is about economic inactivity and keeping, making sure that people who are in work stay in work and are able to be supported there. So it's all very much of the same, as part of the same programme. So I take the member's uh, point entirely. We are already working in that way, and we're looking to extend that across all sectors of uh, Welsh employers uh, as part of our fair work agenda. Caroline Jones. Diolch Lewis. Um, Leader of the House, the Stay Well in Wales survey highlighted that doctors and nurses are not the primary source of health information, probably due to the difficulty in getting an appointment with a GP or practice nurse. The situation is being made much worse by short-sighted decisions by local government. Bridgend Council intend to cut bus subsidies, which put an end to services covering a lot of post call, making it impossible for some residents to get to the new health centre. What is your government doing to ensure that local government decisions do not have an impact on people's ability to access health and social care? That's, I think that's really quite a stretch in terms of public health. But, um, yeah. 
we, we have a very good working relationship with all of our local uh, authority partners in this, and of course they're responsible for delivering social care as well. And we have a, a very well-developed um, bond with them around travel and health travel in particular. And that's something that also comes up in the Workforce Partnership Council from time to time as well. So I can assure the member that we have a very good working relationship with local authorities, and they take into account all of those sorts of decisions in, uh, in making some of the very difficult decisions they've had to make given the austerity agenda still being pursued by the UK government. Christian and Argan Narwain were a hundred yard where a play dear, or when it group you kept Neil Hamilton. I was encouraged when I heard that the First Minister was leaving the country, um, uh, in particular because of what he said uh, at the same time uh, that uh, America was Wales' most important business partner and there are exciting opportunities that lie ahead. And he was going to the United States to press the case for developing a free trade agreement between our countries. Unfortunately, the leader of the opposition at Westminster immediately torpedoed those laudable aims by saying that uh, Labour would seek to negotiate a new comprehensive UK-EU customs union, which, as we know from Mr Barnier, would not uh, include any cherry-picking by the UK government. And as we would be out of the EU, uh, of course, we wouldn't have anything more than the right to be consulted. Um, how can these two conflicting positions of the First Minister of Wales and the Leader of the Opposition of Westminster now be reconciled? Well, I don't think they're conflicting at all, because, of course, the First Minister was speaking about the potential for a free trade deal between the UK as a whole and the USA. And as we've, we've explained on numerous previous occasions, in the sort of customs in union which we envisage the UK would conduct parallel negotiations with third countries to those undertaken by the EU27. And while talks between the EU, US and the EU are currently in abeyance, these will undoubtedly come back onto the agenda in the coming years. It's obviously nonsensical to exclude ourselves from one of the most powerful trading blocs in the world on the basis of some dogmatic political belief? Well, of course, it's, it's, it's clearly impossible under EU law for any member state to conduct trade negotiations with a third country because all that is reserved to the Commission in Brussels. So the Labour Party's position is totally incoherent. Uh, but I was also encouraged by what the First Minister said, uh, that uh, I want to reassure the United States that Wales remains an outward-looking and welcoming country. Unfortunately... That laudable statement was also undermined by the Shadow Foreign Secretary at uh, Westminster, Emily Thornbury, who described Mr Trump as an asteroid of awfulness that has fallen on this world. She said, I think he is a danger and I think he is a racist. Uh, and I'm, deli I'm delighted that Welsh Labour's true face is on display today, agreeing with sentiments that can only do damage to the interests of the United Kingdom and the interests of the people of Wales. If the First Minister is serious about wanting to engage the Trump administration and investors from the United States in the possibilities and potential of our country here, then it pays generally in diplomacy to be nice to people rather than to insult and abuse them. Well, I'm very glad to hear Neil Hamilton's idea of appeasement, which is not my idea of appeasement. There is a huge difference between the presidency of the United States and the United States as an entire country. The First Minister and the Labour Party have been extremely clear about the position on the customs union. We have, have made it explicit that it's in Wales' best interest to remain inside the customs union and actually, indeed, inside the single market. And the FM could not have been more clear in that regard. Well, clarity of that kind is normally to be found only in the pages of Alice in Wonderland or Alice Through the Looking Glass, because you can't be inside and outside at the same time. But the First Minister I see, the First Minister I see intends, in the course of his visit, to talk to Hillary Clinton, and nothing wrong with that in itself, but as Hillary Clinton actually lost the election for the presidency to President Trump, wouldn't it actually have made more sense to try to meet with people in the Trump administration rather than the candidate for the party which lost the election the last time the presidency was up for grabs? The leader of UKIP makes his usual nonsensical alignments between two completely different things. Of course, the First Minister is conducting a series of important negotiations with a range of investors right across the United States Trump and government? Canada, as it happens, in the best interests of this country. And of course, he will be meeting with Hillary Clinton and a range of other people who have an interest in continuing our good relationship. 
Rana Rwain with Plaid Cymru, Rhyna Bjorwerth. Diolch mor iawn. Llywydd, a few moments ago, Leader of the House, you said that the First Minister had been very clear on the customs union issue. I beg to differ, so I'll keep my first question very simple. Does your government favour staying in the EU customs union or a customs union? Yes, I think it's very important that we maintain an open mind during the negotiations with the EU, and therefore we need to have a customs union of one sort or another. If that turns out to be the customs union as a result of the negotiations, well, that would be very interesting. But in the spirit of a negotiation, of course, we have to keep everything on the table. I'm afraid to say that's a regression from the position taken by this government some months ago. The joint white paper securing Wales' future um, concludes that Wales and the UK should remain in the EU Customs Union, and I quote, we are, uh, we, that's you and us, are unconvinced that the possible benefits of withdrawing from the EU Customs Union outweigh the costs. And in fact, every single reference uh, to Customs Union in government policy since uh, is to the existing Customs Union. Uh, there's not a single reference to a new, as yet non-existent type of Customs Union. So why, I ask, has the First Minister changed his tone or changed his language? Why does he now talk about a Customs Union, as do you? Is it because the position, as outlined by Jeremy Corbyn, is at odds with what's in the interests of Wales and the people of Wales, and for want of a better term, the First Minister therefore is having to fudge it? No, I, I disagree entirely. I think it's a very sensible um, point to make that we need to be in a, a position to negotiate the very best possible deal for Wales and for the UK as a whole as part of these negotiations and leaving the European Union. And therefore, we need to try and negotiate the best possible deal. Now, I personally think the best possible deal is the current state of play. I'm a Remainer. I make no um, bones about it. But clearly, in a negotiation, you need to get the best deal. And a negotiation is a two-way street. And we have to see what's on the table from the other side and what their negotiating stance is. So it would be ridiculous to rule out all other options. But, but, but what I don't understand is if you were happy as a government to set out with us what our position was when this document was published, why? Is that still not the case now? I want to work together uh, on this. I'm really proud that through uh, the work uh, that we've that's been done by Stefan Lewis uh, more than anybody on our side, it's good to see Stefan with us today, that we have been able to bring uh, government towards us on some of these core uh, issues and will continue to try to do so. Now, apart from uh, the customs union issue, I think Jeremy Corbyn's Labour position has another uh, fundamental uh, error in that he is committed to pulling out of the single market. He wants to pick and choose aspects of that market, but President Tusk, as we know, has said that there can be no cherry-picking and no single market a la carte. Um, the solution is that we need both, customs union and single market. Jobs in Wales need both, customs union and single market. The port of Holyhead in my constituents, in my constituency, our constituents, all of us, need uh, both. It feels uh, as if at every um, corner the Welsh position is being undermined and undercut by the whims of Westminster, and by that I mean the whims of government and opposition at Westminster. Now, you know that the position I have set out, that Plaid Cymru uh, has set out, makes sense. Will you help us deliver it? We're, we've been very clear as the Welsh Government, and indeed in, in cooperation with Plaid Cymru, about the very best possible outcome for Wales, and we're still very clear about that. But I reiterate what I said. This is a negotiation. It is about getting the best out of the negotiation overall. And so if you rule everything out except the position you start from, that's not a negotiation. You're very likely to fail. So I think it's a very sensible thing to have a range of options on the table which you can start the negotiations with. It remains to be seen where the negotiations will, hold, will end up. I personally still believe that that staying inside the European Union as a whole is the best option for Wales. That's not something that people voted for, and we're in a position of having to negotiate the best deal we can, short of that. Thank you, Presiding Officer. A leader of the House, uh, just before we started today, a letter came from the Cabinet Secretary for the Economy and Transport highlighting the Government's intention to have a vote uh, on the M4 relief road, uh, and I welcome that movement on behalf of the Government. Uh, in the letter, it's three paragraphs long, so it's not particularly long, uh, it indicates that the Cabinet Secretary is seeking legal advice as to the timing of the debate. So I'm assuming that the Government have set their mind on what type of debate uh, you will be bringing 
forward for members to vote on. Will it be a to no uh, debate? Will it be a budget vote? Uh, or will it be a more substantive vote around the inquiry itself? Uh, because, as I said, the letter clearly indicates it's more of a timing issue, and the government is quite clear as to the type and nature of debate that we will be able to vote on. And I'd be grateful for some clarity on, the, on that particular issue. Well, yes. I mean, uh, as I said earlier on in the uh, answer to the question, we've confirmed we'll bring forward the debate in government time on the M4 corridor around port, following the conclusion of the public local inquiry. The, the debate is likely to be a, a two-note debate at this point in time, but I'm hesitant to say that categorically because we don't yet know the outcome of the public inquiry. So until we know the outcome, we don't really know what we can form the debate around. So uh, I'm, I'm prepared at this point to give an indication, but I can't be categoric about it because until we know the outcome of the public inquiry, we're not in a position to be categoric about it. Uh, in fairness, I'm basing my questions on the letter, obviously, and the letter indicates that the government has set its mind on the type of debate we'd be voting on. Well, well it doesn't tie into the public inquiry. It talks more about the timings uh, of the debate based on legal advice. Uh, but you do indicate that it doesn't seem as if it's in the government's mind at the moment to bring forward a budget vote uh, or a, an allocation of resources to this project. As you said earlier, it is a to note because there's quite a difference there is uh, for members to vote on. And given this is the largest capital project that the Welsh Government will be bringing forward, uh, I think it's important for us to understand exactly what the Government is proposing. Uh, and so, can I just be crystal clear, you are at the moment minded that that vote will be a to-note vote? Yes, currently we are minded that it will be a to-note debate, but I want to reiterate that until we see the outcome of the public inquiry and the consequent legal advice and so on, it's imp um, impossible to be categoric. So I'm not in a position to be categoric about it for the best possible reasons, which is we need to react to it in the light of whatever the outcome of the public inquiry is. So w when, we, when we have that, then I'll be, I'll be able to give an indication of what the government's position is. I'm grateful for an element of clarity. I appreciate the public inquiry is still ongoing, uh, but obviously I'm basing my questions on the letter that was received by members. On another transport issue uh, that came to light over the recess uh, was Abellio's withdrawal from the um, rail franchise that is currently up for negotiation uh, and tender uh, from the Welsh Government. Uh, a bitterly disappointing outcome, obviously. Now 50% of the bidders have withdrawn from the process. Um, one would ask the question, did the Welsh Government or Transport for Wales work proactively with Abellio to try and resolve the problem around Carillion, uh, to keep them in the race uh, for, for the tender? Because the more ideas, hopefully the better franchise agreement we will get. And one thing that uh, train users in Wales deserve is a better service than they're getting at the moment. I think, irrespective of party colour, we can all agree with that we can. Um, so what I'd like an indication from the Leader of the House, if possible, is is the government confident that the two remaining bidders bids are robust and will go the duration? Uh, and secondly, what clarity can she give around the engagement uh, with Abellio uh, to try and resolve some of the issues they had with the Carillion collapse, given Carillion's long-standing financial problems that were well understood for many months? Uh, was there much engagement from Transport for Wales and the Welsh Government to try and facilitate them staying within uh, the tendering process? Yes, I mean, we work very hard to keep um, them inside the procurement. The uh, um, Leader of the Opposition is absolutely right. It's better for us to have a widest, the widest range of possibilities open to us in terms of the procurement. So a lot of very hard work took place actually before the Carillion collapse and, and after it to, to keep them in the procurement. However, we've got two uh, still very robust um, tenderers to go ahead with, and we're very confident that we will get a good outcome for the citizens of Wales, which uh, I completely agree with him, they richly deserve. Question three, Vicky Howells. Yeah. Will the First Minister, through the Leader of the House, outline the Welsh Government's plans for its uh, lunch and fun clubs this summer? Yes, in partnership with the WLGA, we will continue increasing the number of local authorities and schools running this scheme by making a further £500,000 available during 2018-19. This will involve working with partners, including local health boards and Public Health Wales, to align agendas, for example, by reducing adverse childhood experiences or increasing sport participation. 
Thank you, Leader of the House. It was a real privilege for me last summer to visit the Lunch and Fun Club in Penwine in my constituency and see the positive benefits that this initiative was having. And that's threefold. It's in terms of providing two um, hot meals a day to all pupils who are eligible for free school meals, providing fun educational activities, but also I was interested in the fact that it provided additional work hours for some of the lowest paid school staff as well. Um, last week saw so perhaps the most game-changing announcement on the holiday hunger agenda with Labour-led North Lanarkshire Council announcing that it is looking to provide um, meals to its FSM pupils uh, 365 days a year with an additional cost implication allegedly of only half a million pound uh, for one of the authorities with the highest rates of free school meals. Um, this is backed up by research that shows that it could improve concentration um, and possibly provide a powerful lever to close the elusive attainment gap between uh, those who are eligible for free school meals and those who are not. Will the Welsh Government uh, look to monitor this pilot and see if it is something which could also be tried in Wales? Yes, indeed. And the, the Food and Fun uh, scheme is a great scheme. It's won seven awards, including an NHS award, recognising the scheme's adherence to the tenets of the Wellbeing of Future Generations Act. And I'm delighted to say the Sustain Charity wrote to all UK governments in 2017, highlighting the Welsh model for tackling holiday hunger as the best in the UK. Um, so we're uh, very pleased with what we've got already, and as I said, we are extending it. We will, however, be watching with keen interest the outcome of the North Lancashire pilot, which is funded by the local authority, and we'll be looking to consider the evaluations of that pilot in, in taking our own scheme forward, and I very much hope that it works out and that we can uh, emulate. Darren Miller. The um, Leader of the House, one thing which uh, is very important is, of course, to make sure that there is childcare provision in the school holidays and indeed outside of the school holidays. Uh, what consideration has the Welsh Government given to the concerns which have been expressed by the uh, Future Generations Commissioner uh, and indeed the Professional Association for Childcare in Early Years about the penalties which uh, grandparents, aunties, uncles, brothers and sisters might face if they are childminding on behalf uh, of their relatives. Surely we want to be encouraging uh, families to share responsibilities for caring, not discouraging them by penalising them because of the Welsh Government's change in its guidance last year. Yeah. Um, well, I share the member's concern, actually, but I'm not sure I'd put it in quite the way that he did. Um, only registered childminders are currently eligible to receive funding as part of the offer because legislation from 2010 actually states that the person looking after a child does not act as a childminder if that person is a parent or relative of the child or a foster parent of the child. So we currently c can't currently fund childminders to care for children who are related to them unless it's part of a wider scheme where they're looking after other children. We have been discussing this with Pacey and we continue to talk to them about what, if any, changes might be made to the legislation ahead of the national rollout of our offer with a view to seeing what we can do uh, to... Um, to balance the two com conflict, slightly conflicting priorities of ensuring that people meet all of the um, regulations and qualifications and food safety and all the rest of its standards you'd expect for somebody looking after children and enabling um, grandparents and so on to take advantage of that scheme. So we are working on that. So I, don't, uh, I do share um, some of his concerns, but I wouldn't put it in quite the way he did. And we are actively looking to see what we can do about it. Question Pedwar, Rina Bjorwerth. Your clawed be a what is coming in in a deal higher devni the plastic and hamri. Apologies. Apologies. It's written down. Be a what is coming in in a deal higher devni the plastic and hamri. Apologies for that. The Welsh Government uh, has ensured that Wales is at the forefront of introducing the charge on single-use carrier bags. Since its introduction, there has been a substantial reduction in single-use plastic carrier bag usage. We are now developing legislation to introduce a microbeads ban in Wales on both the manufacture and sale of those products. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yn cefnogi'r math yma o ymgyrch er mwyn lleihau y faint o blastig sy'n yn amgylchedd ni, ond a wneith uh, arweinydd y tu hefyd gytuno bod angen arweinyddiaeth llywodraeth ac arweinyddiaeth deddfwriaethol gan y cynulliad yma hefyd er mwyn sicrhau bod yn awyddredu Cymru gyfan er mwyn lleihau plastig yn yr amgylchedd. 
Yes, indeed. Very much welcome, Anglesey. It's bid for Anglesey to become Wales's first local authority to be official plastic-free status. And uh, I, I think it includes plans to establish a water refill network across the island, which will be very interested to see how that goes. Um, the member will be well aware that 2018 is Wales's year of the sea, so it's very timely to act to protect our natural assets by taking further action of this sort. We set up the Wales Clean Seas Partnership with a working group to look at these issues and to focus action on preventing the problem at source. The Minister for Environment was pleased to offer her personal congratulations to the Plastic Free Newquay campaigners in Newquay last week when they were officially awarded plastic free status. And it's really pleasing to see Welsh communities taking positive action on the issue. Newquay joins its neighbour Aberporth as official plastic free communities. And we very much hope that other towns and villages across Wales will follow suit. And it's great to see Anglesey Local Authority taking that initiative. As I said in the initial answer, we are developing legislation to introduce the microbeads ban in Wales on both the manufacture and sale of products by 30th of June 2018, we hope. Um, Llantwick Major recently became the first town in Wales to sign up to the Refill app, which encourages people to refill water bottles at shops, cafes and businesses. So we'd like to encourage that sort of thing as well. But I very much welcome it and we're very much actively looking to see what we can do, both legislatively and culturally, to uh, help people reduce their use of plastics. Joyce Watson. Uh, Leader of the House, last September the Cabinet Secretary for Energy, Planning and Rural Affairs announced that she'd commissioned a study that would be looking at ways to, and I quote, increase uh, waste prevention, increase recycling and reduce land and marine-based litter. Uh, the study would also be including research on the impacts of extended producer responsibility schemes. Uh, Leader of the House, uh, can I ask, uh, when can we expect the findings of that report to be made available? We've commissioned a consultant to conduct a study to examine the potential for extended producer responsibility approaches in Wales, which will help increase recycling and reduce the littering of packaging. I think the research will be focusing on food and drink related packaging, including plastic bottles and cans, and will also include an analysis of a potential deposit return scheme. Um, the Minister for Environment is in fact making a statement on recycling Wales later on in today's agenda. Um, I just think it's worth pointing out that Wales has the highest municipal recycling rate in the UK, second highest in Europe and third highest in the world. So yeah, we're yeah, yeah, yeah. doing very well already, but the member is quite right, we could do more and we will be looking to see what we can do. David Melding. Uh, um, Leader of the House, I'm sure you'll welcome the decision by the BBC to eliminate uh, uh, by 2020 all single-use uh, plastics uh, from their... Uh, premises and uh, the Royal Family, which is an institution nearly as grand and august as the BBC, has said that the internal uh, caterers at Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle, and pa the Palace of Holyrood uh, will also will, will will have to use china plates and glasses uh, or recyclable uh, or recyclable paper cups. I just wonder if the Welsh Government is going to follow the uh, Royal Family and the BBC's example and do the same uh, on its premises. Um, I, I think uh, it's a very laudable aim. I'm not too sure about China ones, but uh, uh, I know that David Melding has heard me on one of my many soapboxes on a number of occasions about my antipathy towards single-use coffee cups and my carrying around to the detriment of the inside of my handbag on occasions coffee cups uh, that can be refilled and um, indeed I'm uh, very pleased that the Assembly State largely uses the china cups as well, though we have a little issue with the lids, I think. Um, it's surprisingly hard to eliminate plastic from your life. I've had a go at it myself and there are some products it's very, very difficult to get hold of without plastic. So there is a big issue about us working with the UK government to ensure that we put some pressure on manufacturers to come up with alternatives. There are uh, lots of things we can do in the meantime, though, and I will certainly be taking up a suggestion on the Welsh Government estate to see what we can do to reduce what we currently have in, in terms of single plastic use. And if the flowers will indulge me for one minute, I will repeat something I've already said in this chamber, which I would thoroughly encourage everybody to be using bamboo-handled toothbrushes, which are an excellent substitute for single-use plastic toothbrushes. Question pimp Susie Davis. Uh, Deal, uh, uh, Will the Minister provide an update on the Welsh Government's monitoring of ambulance service response categories? Yes, indeed. The new clinical response model is ensuring all patients receive the right response from the right type of clinician and vehicle to optimise their chances of a good outcome and that patients in most need of immediate intervention receive the fastest response. Well, thank you. Is that an immediate intervention question I want to raise with you? Because, as you'll be aware, there's been some distressing stories uh, in our uh, neck of the woods uh, where a reported injury has not, has in and of itself perhaps not been uh, life-threatening. 
uh, but the outcomes for patients have proven serious because secondary factors have not been taken into consideration by the call handlers. Uh, we've got uh, one incident where individuals were left for hours in freezing conditions uh, at night in a rural location with an injury which perhaps at, at home and in front of a warm fire wouldn't have been a problem. Uh, in another, an elderly person was left lying for hours on a cold floor after a fall with a fracture, which would have proven life-threatening had they been moved by um, a layperson, of course, which is the temptation when somebody's been left uh, lying too long. And in another correct layperson report of not unconscious, um, that wasn't interrogated to reveal that the person was barely breathing and actually deteriorated so quickly that um, the amber categorisation proved a big mistake. So... Would the Welsh Government consider revisiting the questions asked by call handlers, not for wholesale change of principle, but to allow environmental conditions to be taken into account before refusing a red categorisation? Yes, my understanding is that the Cabinet Secretary for Health and Social Services has already asked the Chief Ambulance Services Commissioner to review the monitoring of amber calls in order to reduce the time waited by those with the longest response times and to consider how the amber calls are being dealt with. So I'm sure he's heard that additional point that you've made and will be taking that into account. Question Chwech, Jack Sargent. Thank you. Uh, will the Leader of the House make a statement on investments in transport in North Wales? Um, welcome to the Chamber. I think that's your first question, so it's, uh, I'm delighted to be the one answering it. Our plans for investment across North Wales are detailed in the National Transport Finance Plan 2017 update. Our resources are directed to achieving a sustainable, integrated transport system which supports all modes of transport. Thank you. Leader of the House, we know this Government is delivering game-changing investments in Allen Deeside, from redevelopment of Shotton Station to the £250 million uh, road investment and improvements across the Deeside corridor. This inve investment is definitely welcomed by my constituents, but I'm sure you'll agree that we can and should do more. Transport links within the local communities and across North Wales are very important, as are links from the north, the north to south. But I'm sure you'll, you'll agree with me that links with our English neighbours are vital. Will the Minister update us on the work being done to ensure that we have a closer economic and transport links with the northwest of England? Um, yes, that's very important points. So we certainly recognise the importance of improving transport connectivity between North Wales and North West England, and that's why we're working closely with organisations on both sides of the border to develop and deliver improvements across all transport modes. Representatives from Cheshire West and Chester, Merseyside Travel and Wirral are members of the North Wales and North East Wales Metro Steering Group to ensure we plan and deliver improvements in a joined-up way. And in terms of bus services, officers are working closely with Mersey Travel to improve bus improve bus connectivity between Liverpool and North Wales, and we're expecting a proposal to be brought forward by a bus operator to run the long-distance service shortly. Mark Isherwood. Well, I'm sure, as you're aware, the uh, West uh, uh, and Wales Strategic Rail Prospectus was launched in Westminster yesterday with Ken State spe speaking alongside the Secretary of State for Transport, Chris Grayling, um, a, a proposal developed by a partnership of public and private sector bodies on both sides uh, of the border, and clearly we also support the proposals within that. But a, a parallel to that, and, and, and critical to its success, will be the calls in the growth deal bid for North Wales. How do, therefore, uh, does does the Welsh Government uh, respond to the call or the invitation in the growth deal bid for North Wales to come to both governments, inviting the Welsh Government to support the formation of a regional transport body and a regional transport fund where additional powers will be needed to enable the planning of integrated passenger transport networks? It's, uh, my understanding is it's part of the consideration of the, of the uh, connectivity that I was just talking about. The Cabinet Secretary is indicating to me that it will be part of the consideration. Um, but if the member wants to write for very specific details, I'm sure he'll be happy to give you specifics. Llyr Griffith. Diolch with me, Glywodd Grŵp o Plaid ar Oglydd Cymru gan y Sgwennu'r Cabinet yn cynharach uh, y prynhaw yma uh, ynglyn â chynllunio'r Llywodraeth ymae greu rhywbeth o hybiau trafnidiaeth a draws uh, y gogledd yn niwgrysawu wrth gwrs bydysoddiad o rhysiwr ddegau o filiynau yn yr eisteiledd yna. Um, ond ar yr un pryd, wrth gwrs, ychydig wrth nosyn ôl, mi, mi glywon ni'n mi welon ni gyhoeddi adroddiad, oedd yn dangos mae Cymru welodd y gostyngiad mwyaf yn y nifer o filltiroedd sy'n cael eu teithio ar fysiau. Uh, cyhoeddus trwy brydau'n gyfan. Nawr, tra bod y Llywodraeth yn sôn a fydysoddiad cyfalaf sylweddol sydd uh, i'w groesawu, mae'n amlwg hefyd bod angen fydysoddiad refeniw cyfatebol er mwyn rhoi stop ar yr erydu parhaol mae sy'n digwydd ar fydysoddiad mewn gwasanaethau uh, uh, bysiau. Felly, fyddech chi'n cytuno, uh, mae'r ma risg yw y byddai'n gam gwag i fydysoddi mewn hybiau trafnidiaeth, os o dyn ni yn dal i golli gwasanaethau sylfaenol ar y bysys. Yes, I think the whole situation with uh, bus transport is a fraught one. We are indeed spending an enormous amount of money on bus transport right across Wales, not just 
in, <coughs> in the north uh, of the country. Um, and once we have the um, bus regulation powers um, devolved this, uh, uh, to Wales, um, we will have to have, I think, a fundamental look at how we use that subsidy money, including both revenue and capital subsidies, because I think all of us in this chamber have uh, problems with bus services in our area, and there are some significant difficulties around the uh, planning of the routes and the preponderance of uh, routes where, for example, concessionary travel passes are available <coughs> and so on. So I, I actually I completely agree with the member that a fundamental uh, look needs to be had. But I think we need to look uh, and to, at the point in time we have the power to regulate um, so that we have a bit more leverage in terms of some of the routes that we would like to see. I'm not familiar with the specific routes in his area, but I can assure you that in my area I have many of the same difficulties and we will certainly be looking at it again. Question Scythe, Mike Hedges. Uh, will the First Minister or the Leader of the House outline how much funding the Welsh Government is planning to give Maddy and Maithrin in the 2018-2019 financial year? Yes, grants and contracts totalling more than 3.7 million have so far been allocated to Muddy Edmithin for this 2018-19 financial year. This includes an additional 1 million to expand Welsh Medium Early Years provision across Wales. Uh, can I thank you for that answer? I want to raise the importance of Muddy Edmithin, uh, which gets children to start using Welsh at a very young age, uh, which leads on to them attending Welsh Medium schools and thus increasing the number of Welsh speakers in Wales. Uh, will the Welsh Government produce a plan to increase the numbers attending TRV and Muddy Edmithin? Because that is going to be the only way in which that number of Welsh speakers is going to be increased dramatically over the next te uh, 20 or 30 years. Yes, I have some sympathy with what the member is saying. As my own parents are Welsh speaking, as he knows, and I'm not Welsh speaking, as they didn't teach it to me as a child, and I've singularly failed to get any better at it than uh, knowing my colours and numbers, I'm ashamed to say. Um, so I think there's a lot to be said for um, bringing up your children bilingual. Come Rag for Kids provides advice and support for parents and prospective parents aimed at enabling families to use more Welsh. The programme is targeted at prospective parents and families with children aged uh, 0 to 4. And Madiad Maithin delivers local activities and support on behalf of the Welsh Government. These include story and song sessions, baby yoga and baby massage groups. These ex activities were expanded to all local authorities from April 2017, and the contract for delivery of the activities has been extended to March 2019, as uh, we absolutely agree with the member that the earlier the engagement with the Welsh language and the more frequent that engagement in the family, the more likely it is that their language will, will stick. We've got a network of more than 400 um, I can't even say that in Welsh, I'm ashamed to say. Cilliodd TRV, parent and toddler groups across Wales. These provide activities promoting the development of children from birth to school age and offer the opportunities for families, families to socialise in an informal Welsh atmosphere. And I'm going to add something else in that I know for my digital uh, portfolio myself, which is that I very much encourage everybody to get as much Welsh onto Wikipedia as possible and onto the web because... Uh, what we find is that if youngsters can use it in their day-to-day -day activities as part of their socialisation, then they tend to use Welsh much more frequently amongst their peer group outside of the school setting. And that also helps to cement the use of Welsh language uh, in their lives. And so we've been trying to encourage that for some considerable period of time. But the additional £1 million to support the work in 2018-19 will enable them to make rapid progress to expand Welsh Medium Early Years provision and it will be used to undertake work specifically aimed at establishing new settings in areas with a current shortage of Welsh medium childcare provision as well. Susie did, uh, deal. Uh, well, uh, this, uh, this money is very welcome. And of course, it's a very important seed, seed corn investment for uh, the, uh, the 1 million speakers uh, policy by 2050. But you can't make the assumption that just because a child goes to TV and Midian Maitre that they will continue to use Welsh throughout their lives, particularly when they leave school. Uh, while it might be quite difficult to monitor the progress of individuals using Welsh when they perhaps learn it online, it should be easy to track um, uh, the progress of a child and whether they develop and use their Welsh throughout their life. Is that something that's part of Welsh? government's uh, plans um, within the, the 2050 strategy? Um, I'm not absolutely certain whether that specific is, but, but I know that the, re the review of Welsh and education strategic plans undertaken by Alid Roberts in 2017 included recommendations to strengthen the strategic relationship between local <coughs> authorities and Madiad Maithrin to it, it ensure growth at local authority level to contribute to the Welsh Government target for 2015 and to ensure the system for capital investment takes need of the preschool provision into account in order to plan more effectively for the transition between preschool and primary phase. So that's partly answering your question in the sense that we are tracking people from preschool into the primary stage provision. But I'll ask the Minister uh, with responsibility for the Welsh language to specifically answer your question. Sir Griffith. Uh, 
Croesawyr ffaith bod y Cytundeb Rhwng Plaid Cymru a, a'r Llywodraeth wrth gwrs yn y Cytundeb uh, ar y Gyllideb wedi sicrhau'r adnoddau chynegol yma i, I mudiad uh, meithrin. Um, Byddai ni'n angetuno i'r adde gyda'r pwynt oedd uh, Susie Davies yn wneud, oherwydd um, Mae'r dystoleth yn dangos os i chi uh, yn mynd i uh, uh, gilch meithrin neu addysg cyn ysgol cyfrwng Gymraeg, yna i chi lawer iawn mwy tybygol o fynd ymlaen i addysg Gymraeg, uh, na petai chi ddim, ac wrth gwrs, i ni'n sôn fan hyn am strategaeth gan y Llywodraeth i, I sicrhau miliwn o siaradwyr Cymraeg erbyn 2050. Um, ond fyddai ni eisiau cyfeirio benodol fan hyn at y cynnig ofal plant ym y Llywodraeth uh, uh, yn, yn i ddatblygu nawr, wrth gwrs, a, a'r rôl allweddol sydd gan hwnnw i sicrhau bod cynifer o, o blant ac sy'n bosib yn y roed cyn ysgol yna yn cael eu, um, yn cael eu dal o fewn y cyntiniw ym addysg Gymraeg uh, yn hytrach nag yn cychwyn y siwr neu addysg tu allan iddo fe. Herwydd unwaith i chi wedi colli nhw'n y blynyddoedd cynnar yna, y tybygrwydd llethol yw na fyddan nhw'n dod i fewn i addysg Gymraeg ac na fyddan nhw yn ennill uh, y gallu I, I, I fod uh, yn ddwyieithog. Felly, gai ofyn, um, sut i chi yn sicrhau y bydd pob plentyn yn cael mynediad i wasanaethau uh, Cymraeg o safbwynt y, y cynnig uh, uh, gofal plant, a hefyd, wrth gwrs, yr angen i sicrhau bod yna weithlu digonol uh, i fedru sicrhau bod y ddarpariaeth yn ambodoli. Yes, well, Member's quite right. We did put the additional £1 million in, uh, invested in to enable them to respond to the challenge set out in Cymraeg 2050 to make rapid progress in expanding Welsh medium early years provision. Um, We've delivered over 2,000 groups so far during 2017-18, providing support and advice to enable families to use more Welsh. And the member's absolutely right. There's real data to show that preschool activity does lead on to Welsh medium activity. And uh, as I was saying to Susie Davis, we've extended um, our, our monitoring of that to make sure that we have the data available. And we've extended the contract for delivery of the activities as well to March uh, 2019. And as the lead organisation within Coolum, the a consortium of five leading childcare organisations in Wales, Mudiad Maithrin has also undertaken projects aimed at delivering a bilingual integrated service that will ensure the best possible outcomes for children and families across Wales with a view to that bilingualism as opposed to teaching Welsh as a foreign language, which is, uh, I, I think, is a policy that hasn't stood us uh, the test of time, and I'm uh, living proof of how well it doesn't work. Question or three on Passmo. Clareth, will the uh, First Minister provide, or the Leader of the House, an update on the Welsh Government's assessment of the impact of leaving the European Union? First line. Leaving the European Union will affect every community in Wales, in particular jobs, businesses and public services in Isloin, and indeed across Wales, will be critically dependent on securing full and unfettered access to the single market and the customs union, which are our top priorities. Uh, Deal. Leader of the House. David Liddington, UK Tory Government Minister for the Cabinet Office, speaking at Airbus in North Wales, offered to rewrite the alleged flagship Brexit bill to address the concerns of the devolved administrations in Wales and Scotland. The First Minister of Wales, in reply, has stated, as currently drafted, the EU withdrawal bill allows the UK Government to take control of devolved policy areas, such as farming and fishing, once the UK has left the EU. This is an unacceptable attack on devolution in both Wales and Scotland. Leader of the House, what further actions can the Welsh Government take to ensure that the UK Tory Government respects the hard-fought devolution settlement to this Assembly? And how can the Welsh Government safeguard the economic interests of the people of Islaine once the United Kingdom leaves the European Union? Yes, well, the member makes a very important point, and of course, uh, we've been in um, extended negotiations with the UK government about the respect for the devolution settlement as, uh, uh, as indicated in the EU withdrawal bill. Um, uh, we will be looking to bring forward a bill, uh, the continuity bill, and I'm very pleased for myself to see Stefan in the uh, chamber this afternoon, um, but we'll bring forward that continuity bill to ensure that the devolution settlement is properly reflected in the EU withdrawal bill, and thus we are able to protect our economy, our jobs and our future prospects. Mohamed Ashka. Mr. Last week, Professor Patrick Minford of Cardiff University told... Told, told. Yeah, 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 listen. Yes, I listen. I listen. He told the Cardiff University that Welsh, told Welsh, Welsh Affairs Select Committee that Welsh consumers will benefit enormously from the lower prices as a result of competition and rising productivity, resulting from... I do leaving... need to hear the member, please. Carry on, Thank Carry you. on, Mohamed Ashka. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Resulting from leaving the custom unions and the single market. He predicted, he predicted that poorer households, such as those in Isloin, would make even bigger gains 
why the Welsh government is why the Welsh government is so so dismissive and negative of the views of economists like Professor Minford and reluctant to recognize the economic opportunities resulting from the Brexit for Wales. Answer. Answer. Well, Professor Minford is a little of an outlier amongst economic uh, professors, and uh, in fact, I think he's entirely alone in his analysis of the Welsh economic prospects without the EU. Our economic analysis shows that over the long term, our economic output could be up to 8 to 10% lower than otherwise if we leave the single market and are forced to trade under World Trade Organization rules. This is in line with other published economic analysis and the reports of the UK government's own assessment. This is equivalent to around £1,500 to £2,000 a head. The impact on the UK's economy will hit the public finances available to provide public services. Following a long period of sustained austerity, this will only make worse the continued challenge of delivering our priorities within the context of growing, precious and an ever-decreasing budget. Economic growth and jobs in Isloin are being supported through multi-million pound European Union funding schemes, including working skills for adults, bridges into work, apprenticeships and the smart business and innovation schemes. These ben the benefits these schemes are creating for our communities, people and businesses demonstrate the need for replacement funding for the UK government after we leave the EU. Otherwise, I'm afraid Professor Minford will find himself once again on the wrong side of the academic argument. Akanola Stefan Lewis. Diolch Llywydd. I deeply regret the uh, newfound politicking and uh, ducking and weaving on the question of the single market that was apparent yesterday in, in the UK Labour leader's speech uh, on his uh, vision for a future relationship with the European Union. There are real consequences to leaving the single market for real people. One of those will be that we will lose the right to benefit from clinical trials from the European Medicines Agency. Only EEA and EU member states benefit uh, from clinical trials and treatments. So I'd like to have reassurance from the Leader of the House, and this isn't something you can achieve, by the way, through free and unfettered access. You have to be a member of the single market to benefit from EMA membership and for your citizens to benefit from the clinical trials. Can we have a commitment that you will robustly oppose any attempt by a government of any colour in Westminster to deny Welsh citizens the access to the best and cutting-edge treatment that they can be provided with. Yes, I, yes, I am very happy to categorically say that. Um, we've never made any bones about the fact that we need to stay inside those arrangements. It's disastrous for research of all sorts, not just clinical research, across Wales and across the UK to be outside of those far-reaching partnership arrangements for that cutting-edge research. So I'm very happy to say that that remains our position and we will be robustly defending it at whatever level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diolch i arweinydd y tŷ ar eitem nesa. Credwch na feidio i'w datgan.